Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be sharing the story of how my lovely husband Josh Beach and I met. This is something that a lot of people have asked us about over the years and we've just never shared. We shared like a, a silly video that was just... I uh, think that was quite an accurate video. It was, <laughs> it was not accurate. How we met. It was like a comical video of how we met that we filmed when we yes. were on our We left moon. out the naked skydiving in that one. <laughs> there was no, yeah, no naked skydiving in that one, but in today's story. We want to say thank you to HBO Max for partnering with us on this video. Thank you HBO Max for partnering with us on this video. There you go, Josh wants to say it too. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't actually know this, but I am going to be showing you a few clips from different films in the Valentine's Day collection on HBO Max that you can check out right now if you want to. If you love romantic films as much as Josh Peach and I do. I love romantic films. Josh and I, when we first met, did watch a lot of romantic films together. I think we were just like feeling the love, I guess. I guess you can call them romantic. Some of them <laughs> <laughs> and so I pulled some clips from the videos on the Valentine's Day collection on HBO Max that I think really kind of embody a few moments in that initial whirlwind love story of ours to me and you. And they're from like some of our favorite movies. So okay. I thought it would just be like a nice thing to kind of tie in the story it. as it happens. And just in case you don't already know, HBO Max is a streaming service with hundreds of films and TV shows for you to watch. So whether you are loved up in a couple or you are single AF, they have got something for everybody. And I will leave a link in the video description below so you can check it out. All right, let's tell the story. Yeah, okay, cool. It all started on one <laughs> rainy night in New York because City. Because no story would be complete if it wasn't narrated by an American in an English accent. <laughs> really bad. Yeah. We were in New York. I was back there visiting my old roommate who's an artist who had a big studio in the Soho area. <laughs> Why are you it's looking at me as if I'm not telling the no, truth? No, it's just like a very descriptive. Oh, it's true. It is. Yes. It, well, it sets the scene though, doesn't it? Wasn't sure. It? This evening that I was there back there visiting because I did used to live in New York and he was having a gathering. He'd invited an old friend of mine there and they came to the door and he asked me to go and answer the door. So I went and answered the door and Sinead was there with my old friend, well, my still friend, but I just don't want to drop names because they might not want to be included. Yeah. In, yeah. And you don't know who they are probably. <laughs> Maybe you do. Robert Pattinson. <laughs> and... <laughs> It wasn't Robert Pattinson. That would be yeah. weird. It's Sinead showed up with Robert Pattinson and then decided <laughs> okay. to leave with me. The mutual friend was there at the door and I opened the door to Mon Shen. And that was it, pretty much. That is not the whole story at all. Well, I mean, that was it pretty so, much as far as like game over. It wasn't game over right away. Some context here was that Josh had been told by his friend that the girl that their mutual friend was, our mutual friend was bringing was an actress on TV. Josh right, right, right. had spent a lot of time, you know, in his modeling and music career around famous people and just was like automatically had written me off as someone who was going to have a big ego and, you know, he wasn't going to be interested in hanging out with pretty much. And when I opened the door to see this guy standing here who's like, tall, skinny, tattooed, beautiful, and just like obviously also has a British accent. I was like, okay. Who are you talking about? <laughs> this guy probably has girls. Make me blush. Like you know. knocking down his door all day, every day. I can only imagine what a dick he's gonna be. So I'm just gonna pay him no mind. Like I don't have time with like dudes with an attitude who are up their own ass. I just, had the same basic vibe as you had towards me, which is like we had just automatically written each other off. 100% I was like, nope. Then we went upstairs and we were all just kind of hanging out and I had like an attitude on me. I wanted to go somewhere else. I didn't want to be there. And when I don't want to be somewhere, I let it be known. Josh is always the life of the party. So he was dancing and having a great time and making everybody laugh as he always does. Then everything kind of changed when the talking heads came on. Yes. <laughs> Josh was dancing and being silly and had a sailor's hat he on. had a sailor's hat on and I liked the song and I love to dance. So I got up and I started dancing too. And you were like, 
Okay, I see what the deal is. And I think I took the hat off your head, or you. you took the, oh, I put the you hat put the on hat my on my head. Yeah. That was like the mating call. Yeah. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> rah, rah, hat. Wink. It was. It was like the music and the dancing and just. The hat. I let my guard I said down. I was like, "Here's my hat. Take my hat. <laughs> now you're my wife." <laughs> yeah, I mean. So speaking of our dancing and our dance skills and that moment of like ice breaking, I thought it would be a good time to throw to a little clip from one of the films on HBO Max that is a favorite of mine. <laughs> Basically me, isn't it? I feel like I'm Patrick Swayze. <laughs> what are you talking about? No way. I'm just saying. Who do you think was the Patrick Swayze in that situation? Don't like, answer that. I think it broke the ice and it definitely had my guard down. Then we decided that we were going to leave, me and my friend. I think ultimately you were like, I can't handle this. This is going to be it's it. too much. So I'm going to go. But she made plans to leave, but I was there at my uh, old roommate's house with another friend of mine, and him, him and I had already made plans to leave with the mutual friend that Sinead showed up with. So Sinead's plan to leave kind of backfired because I was already leaving with the friend she was trying to leave with. AKA with makes me, sense. like they were coming with us. We got in a cab, and I just remember I was sitting in the front seat with the driver, and you were like two rows back. It was like a van cab. And our mutual friend was in the middle. We just had this banter all like for that whole first hour that we met of just like kind of insulting each other and like poking fun at each other, but in a sort of serious way. You said something and I said something back and I was like meh, 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 meh. And then our friend in the middle was just like, okay, you guys, like this is not fun anymore. It's getting kind of awkward. So like, if you're gonna keep this up all night, then like, why are we all going out together? And that was like the moment that really broke the ice and you and I just both started laughing. Yeah. We were like, but it's so much fun. And yeah. like, I think we realized in that moment, like we'd really met our match, yeah. you know, like we weren't going to take each other's shit. And it was just, yeah, the sparks were definitely there. From there, we ended up going to another bar. Everybody like slowly started leaving the bar. And by the end of the night, it was just like us, us yeah. and your one friend who we walked home because mm -hmm. he lived near me. And then, and you then walked, it was raining. And then it was very much raining. It was raining then. One hour later. Just got Bowie up from her nap so she could be joining us at any moment here. And we are going to try and power through the rest of this story. We told you guys it was going to be a long one. It was raining mm -hmm. and we hung out outside. It felt like it was like out of a movie. It and did. I think we were lingering on the steps for a really long time because like neither of us really wanted to say goodbye and yeah, have the 100%. night be over. So we ended up going in and talking in your place till the sun came up. And then I eventually had to go to work in the morning. Mm -hmm. You'd fallen asleep. Yeah. And um, we didn't exchange numbers. I couldn't wake you <laughs> no. to do that. Then I went off to work and then straight after that job, I had to catch a flight. And then I remember in the taxi on uh, the way to my flight, our friend like tagged us in a tweet or whatever you called out on Twitter. She had posted a picture. The one who was the mutual friend. I remember when I woke up in my apartment, like super hungover, I really did not know if like Josh Beach was just a figment of my imagination or if that was something that really happened because it really just felt like this kind of like whirlwind drunken New York fairy tale. I realized that it did in fact happen and I had no way of contacting him and I really didn't think at that point I would ever see or speak to him again and I just called my mom in Toronto and was like I had the craziest mm -hmm. night and I can't wait to tell my kids this story one day of when their mom was young and cool and in New York and had this wild night Welcome. and little did we know we'd be telling our children that story one day. Uh, so we spent the next month or two traveling around the world, really. We were in New York, obviously. We were in New Orleans, because I got a job there, and Josh came to see me there. We went to Canada to meet my family, the UK to meet his family. Italy for another job that you had. Yeah. We were just all over the place for the next month or two, just grabbing as much time together as we could. We just really felt like we wanted to soak up as much of each other as possible. Like we could not yeah. get enough. Like it always felt like we never knew when we were gonna see each other next. So yeah. 
we just wanted to keep it going. So this leads me to my next clip that I wanna show you, which is another film that's available on HBO Max and our favorite film, Mutually. It's a clip that reminds me of what my mom said to me when, we, when she first saw us together. She looked at me and she was like, I just feel like I see my little girl again because my time in LA before meeting you had really jaded me a lot. She just saw that fun being pulled out of me when I was around you, which I think was a really special thing. And this little clip from The Notebook <laughs> reminds me of that so much. It made me so happy. Get in the water! Get in the water! I just love that so much. Cause you've always pushed me, like you've really pushed me out of my comfort zone to just like let go and you know, be who I am and be silly. And yeah, I think we've always really had that organic. 100%, gotta be yourself, isn't you? Yeah, exactly. Got the thumbs up from my mom, obviously, in Canada. Got the thumbs up from Josh's mom and sisters in England. And then we went to Italy because Josh was walking in the Moschino Fashion Show in Milan. That was a really, really fun trip. But then I had to leave. And this next clip just is, again, from one of our favorite movies. It's one of the best soundtracks ever. It reminds me of this moment. I don't even know if you remember this, but in Milan, I had to leave for whatever reason early to work or something. And we went to the airport. We were really sad to say goodbye to each other because we'd been on this kind of like whirlwind trip of you know a few weeks at that point. I just remember saying goodbye and he had to stay on the other side of the rope and I was over here in the customs line or security line or whatever and I was just sobbing. I mean like really severely sobbing because I was filled with this anxiety. I'd never had that kind of separation anxiety from another person before. Like I just, I did not want to go a day without being around you. And you jumped. Like, I don't know if you jumped a, a rope or a barrier or something, but you got your way past security to come and meet me in line and just hold me for a minute and comfort me and let me know that it was going to be okay and that I was going to see you again soon. And just being cared for like that really meant so much to me. And so, yeah, this clip reminded me of that story. <laughs> Doesn't he die in it? Yes, yeah. he does, and it's so sad, but isn't that such a good scene? <laughs> After the barrier jumping and everything, <laughs> yeah. decided to come and give LA a chance. Yeah. Been going there for years. You didn't like it? Didn't like it, but I needed to be wherever you were, so. I had to go back for 90210, and I don't think we'd even really had much of a conversation about you moving to LA. You were gonna come out for a couple of weeks to get me resettled into LA to start filming the show. And then after a couple of weeks, he was just like, okay, well, I guess I'll go get my shit in England and see you back here in a week or two. I just gave all my shit away in England pretty much, didn't I? I yeah, think. he came back with one suitcase. I yeah. had found us an apartment the week or two that you were gone. Yeah. And that was it. And the rest of our story yeah. is still being written to this day. So to wrap it up, I want to show you one last clip. Okay. And you're going to hate me for this, but okay. it's a really, really important clip. Now, like I said, The Notebook, which is available on HBO Max, is our favorite movie, was our favorite movie, independently, individually, before ever meeting. If you don't like that movie and it doesn't make you an emotional person, you are a monster. Yeah, <laughs> you're just a complete robot with no feelings because yeah. it's the most emotional film ever and we love it. Yeah, but the first time that we watched it together, in our apartment that we had together in LA. I was like hysterical for hours after the movie ended. Like I couldn't, cause I finally had that kind of love with somebody, like I understood what these characters were going through. And this scene in particular was the one that sent me over the edge. Here we go. Do you think I love you? Could take us away together. I think our love can do anything we want it to. I gotta go, that's awful. That's man. how we'll die, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to do it. And on that note, Josh is just crying behind the camera right now, so I'll do the outro by myself. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed hearing a bit about our whirlwind 
romance and how we met and you know the love story that ensued from there thank you so much to hbo max for partnering with us on this video and for having so many incredible movies that we love so much for us all to watch i will leave the link again for where you can watch their movies down in the video description below. I also have a quick question for you that I want you to answer down in the comments below. As you heard throughout our love story, travel was a really important part of our relationship. And obviously with COVID times, we can't be doing that right now. So our date nights really consist of a lot of couch time, sweatpants, yummy snacks, and movies on HBO Max. So how are you guys date nighting right now in COVID times? I know people are getting pretty creative with how they're keeping the spark alive. Comment below and let me know and maybe we'll do like a date night vlog or something like that on the channel coming up. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We love having you a part of our little YouTube fam and we will see you guys in the next video. See you later. Mwah.